All right, I think we got it figured out. I see the little audio meter bouncing now, and uh, I think our audio is our background audio may be working at least in my headset. It is working. Testing out my headset. Yes, excellent. Excellent. That was the audio level on the background. It's a little high. Testing out my headset. Yes, excellent. Okay, it seems to duck anyway. Here we go. <clears throat> I would like to thank my patrons who have really been helping to make this possible to make uh, it affordable for me to share balloon content uh, and try and educate people out there and review myself balloon information and we call fun interesting engineering tidbits so thank you patrons uh, Mike Bowen Sheila Bunch Ben Latham Ken Howard Sophie Searcy M Fong Ashley Meyer and Robert Quattlebaum and Steve Randall whose name uh, I have not yet updated on that list. Let's do that right now, lest I forget. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go take a look. Again, feel free to chat. You will be announced live on the stream via audio. And uh, that's so that I can hear it and know you're chatting while, uh, while I'm reading through this. So this is one of the seminal tomes of scientific ballooning, high altitude ballooning in general. This is the, like the master academic reference, uh, covers a huge range of topics in a very concise textbook format uh, that is super useful and I think is under, underappreciated in the field. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. <clears throat> I'll just for the throat clearing. So, unfortunately, the text is a little tiny. It's split left and right. One of my goals is to fix PDFs like this where they're split left and right uh, and make it one continuous paper, uh, which would make it a lot easier to, you know, to parse and read in modern day. But let's, uh, let's read through the abstract. So the Scientific Ballooning Handbook by the National Center for Atmospheric Research was edited by Alvin L. Morris. The abstract reads, the current revolution in the scientific ballooning has resulted in a technology that is important to many groups. Much of this technology was developed in the decade after World War II and was classified as sensitive information, thus not receiving wide distribution at the time nor even now after being declassified. This handbook was prepared to fill that knowledge gap as far as possible. All aspects of scientific ballooning are covered with a few of the topics as follows. Theory of balloon flight, lifting gases, balloon design, the atmosphere and parachutes. Oh, 
I'll skip through the introduction. You see there are several contributors for individual chapters here. So, section one, the evolution of ballooning. I'm going to take a peek at our stream and see what size text is legible. I know that the stream is only going out at 720p, so that limits our textual resolution. Mm -hmm. That's that seems to be the lower limit there. That's kind of blurry for you guys. Okay. So there's a, a, a wonderful list of symbols used in papers here on the right in the in the uh, the formulas. Uh, I wish papers these days provided such nice. Uh, references for this sort of a thing. So we'll skip through these because they are not terribly interesting. Trackpad scroll seems nice. So while some of my broadcast would focus on the evolution of ballooning historical information, today we're going to actually look at some of the more technical details themselves. Um, it's been a while since I've addressed an audience of a technical ballooning nature and not just one of sort of lay people that um, that we're bringing to the first time, information to for the first time, which I love and enjoy doing, but I need some, need to dust off my skills for the, excuse me, the more technical audiences as well. As shown by figure one, two operational conditions of the balloon had long been recognized, full and partially full, or slack or flabby. A rising full balloon would discharge gas by automatic spillage. A slack balloon would not. Except for the final landing approach, this means of gas control remained the only one in practical use until the advent of the calibrated valve. Here, it should be noted that vertical control was especially critical in the usual daytime unstable conditions 
dictated by the use of moist gas having two or more atoms per molecule. Such gas responded to altitude change with a temperature change numerically less than the average or standard lapse rate, which is a negative gradient in the troposphere. It seemed to be tacitly assumed that the partially filled balloon would necessarily be in a less critical condition structurally than a full, bo full balloon. This error in this assumption was not serious as long as operation was was, we'll come back to that figure, confined to the lower troposphere, but with stratosphere expeditions using netless balloons, it was a different story. Let's take a look at this uh, diagram. <clears throat> so the curve here is uh, of a partially full ascending envelope. Even during the ascent, you can see that this top curve is taut. So they are labeling some of the dimensional variables here. So foot ropes refer to the time when balloons had nets over them. And the freely vented appendix was common for the gas balloons of the early days, where as the helium would fill up or hydrogen or coal gas would fill up the envelope and overflow, it would come down through this tube. Note that the balloon is vented at the bottom so that air fills the slack balloon below the zero pressure level. So here we see zero pressure level partially full. Nowadays, uh, it is absolutely not recommended to have air mixed with your lift gas as you will have a dilution and that dilution will cause lift gas to escape as the whole bubble of lift gas expands. It does not simply remain two different layers of different density materials as oil and water do. Though the gases have large differences in density, they, they mix. There's not a big barrier between them. Let's look back at that equation here. An important property of the traditional balloon net is its distribution of load in two dimensions over a substantial range 
of shape and pressure variation. Especially, especially if similarly shaped meshes are retained toward the top. A similar property can theoretically be had by a suitable arrangement of threads and panels of woven fabric, but this property is practically destroyed in a conventional two-ply rubberized fabric, conventional being very old, in which only one ply is laid on the bias. The same applies to any flexible but essentially inextensible membrane, the reasons that will now be apparent. So bias, bias is a term in fabric. Uh, let's, let's just Google that, It'd be good to review. Fabric bias. So bias is, okay, so where you have a grid of threads in fabric, the bias is simply the diagonal direction for, across the grid. And the, uh, the other directions are called, called uh, warp and weft. Uh, now what is the difference between warp and weft? I have forgotten all of these terms. Let's look warp and weft up. That's where you Google warp weft. Okay, so warp is the, the long ways, uh, like if the fabric is on a roll, it is the long ways uh, length of the long strip web of fabric. And so that is warp and weft is the short side to side uh, runs, uh, which for example, on a traditional loom, the weft would be what is on the shuttle that runs back and forth, and the weft will be the lines that move up and down for the shuttle to go in between. Warp and weft, and bias is diagonal, 45 degrees. In a balloon carrying the usually concentrated payload, this gravity load must, of course, reappear in the axial component of circumferentially integrated total meridional tension adjacent to the load attachment level. Sidebar, uh, meridional, the term meridional is, wow, I can't believe I'm forgetting a core ballooning term like that. It's meridian. Yeah, yeah, okay. It is the, the direction up and down on the balloon, just like the, the meridians of, uh, wow, I need coffee. I'm forgetting the latitude and longitude. Um, longitude, <laughs> the meridians of longitude, like prime meridian uh, verticals on the globe of the earth. Tension adjacent to the low detachment level <laughs> where such stress must also be in normal balance with the local gas pressure. Since there must always be stress in the meridional direction. Sidebar, the meridional direction is always going to have stress because it's supporting the load of the payload. So you're hanging something, 
at, which is being lifted by the gas, which is pushing upward. So you gotta somehow lift the thing from the force of the restrained gas so that basically the ropes or the fabric is hanging, supporting. So those are in tension, the load, holding the load of the payload. It is clear that any slack to accommodate a less than full condition must be in the circumferential direction. So circumferential is like latitude around the horizontal rings around the balloon. And what they're saying here is that if it's not full and tight, then uh, you can't, where you're gonna have slack is in the side to side. So the vertical fabric is gonna be tight because though your bubble of helium is smaller, it's still got to lift all total load of that payload. So you got to hang the payload. So all the fabric has still got to be in tension or under load. Whereas because the fabric is not pressed outward by the helium, it's not going to be in tension this way. It's just going to be floppy while tight this way. It's going to be floppy this way. Like if you can imagine curtains, you can pull down on them, but still there'll be loose fabric in between the folds. Uh, even though it's holding up your pull on the bottom of a curtain, set of curtains. And that is the circumferential direction is where the slack or the loose fabric is. It's also clear that with gas pressure normal to the surface, that is uh, perpendicular to a surface, that's normal, uh, a physics term, engineering term, only the skin weight or other applied load can change the total tension within a slack portion of the balloon at a given altitude. So what they're saying here, with gas pressure pressing on the skin, only the skin weight or other load can change the total tension within a slack portion. Thus, in such a portion of the balloon, aside from skin weight, that is the weight of the fabric or the plastic, that's skin weight. The stress or tension, the tightness, per unit of horizontal circumference varies inversely as the circumference, where G is the total weight carried at the concentration point. Okay, that's a big formula. Uh, we'll get into that in one moment. We need to do a little housekeeping here on the streaming and the music. The music appears to have gotten the name stuck loop on this one song which is this is a moderately okay song but i've got a whole catalog here from the game surviving mars by paradox interactive let's uh let's take off the repeat one and repeat all and i'm just gonna kick it to the next song there we go a little break from that Again, feel free to chat, uh, drop a note, uh, and I'm happy to respond. Let's say that. I'm trying to make it small-ish. Small-ish. Like image here. Actual balloon reading. Let's 
Yeah, that's fair. That's fine. I'll just try and remember not to read things that are in the lower left corner. With that, I will BRB. Thank you. 
Out of coffee, so tea it is. little better.
All right. I should get some way to like actually draw formulas and things. Play with them. It'd be nice. Algebraic engine of some sort. <clears throat> so the dreaded math. Let's uh, let's take a look at what we've got going here. So we've got TM, which is the, the meridional. I believe that's the meridional stress. Um, G divided by two pi times the cosine of HO equals BV divided by two pi times cosine of HO equals PRM. Well, that's quite a lot to uh, process there. My T is done. Stop. I wonder if I could set up a cam looking at a piece of paper for me to jot things down since I don't have the, the fancy Khan Academy tech here on the road. I'm in Bulgaria, by the way hiding out COVID. Maybe I should, maybe, maybe you know what? Ah, uh, no, that would be going up. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll experiment with having a camera, a phone cam to look at paper. another time, but how are we gonna muddle through this math here otherwise? Well, we can we can just type it up for now, shall we? Yes, we're gonna do the math. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be one of those days where we're actually gonna do the homework here. So let's... Uh, I'm going to reconfigure our stream for what what app do I have that does decent math formatting? Do I have any? I mean, there's always Google Docs, but that's CPU nightmare. Just a huge hog on CPU usage. And my little MacBook Air is already straining with just streaming. So we need a lightweight app that can do text formatting of graphics. <laughs> well, it's a casual stream. Sounds like a fun diversion, shall we? Shall we go try and find? Um, before I share my screen, I'm going to... Uh, Let me just skim through my applications. I'll share the screen. Kind of a exhibitionist, data exhibitionist. There's always Wolfram Alpha, but it's very ephemeral. Ephemeral.
No, Dizzy. Okay, so let's just see if I already have an app that uh, can do decent math. BB Edit, I love you, but you're plain text only. I really don't have uh, much in the way of text editing that's not super plain text. I pretty much constrain, constrain my work to documenting work to Google Docs, but really it's just been a hog of CPU re uh, resources. Hmm. I know there's a preference to make the view a little bit bigger. There you go. You have some chance of seeing what the heck I'm doing now. Really? A time machine? Yeah. Let's let's not do time machine in the middle of a stream there. Thank you. Suspicious package, I forgot about that. Hey, it looks like we might be able, to, we might get to go search the internets for a cool app. Yay, we do. We could try Google Docs. Let's see what our CPU load is. Mm. We're only pulling 50%, you know, I think we might have the bandwidth for a little Google Doc session. Let me, uh, pause our screen share. D, D identify personal information on Google Doc, docs.google.com.
All right, got the docks a running. See how laggy it's going to be. All right, let's see here. Give it a shot. Okay, so let's bring up our papers reference. So to make this a little easier, we're just going to screenshot this. And we're going to paste it into Google Docs. This is a, a doc I've been uh, compiling recently just to review uh, some balloon references. Let's make a new chapter. Oh, I forgot to share with you guys. There we go. All the, all the video. So what, what we'll do here is, uh, this is page, what? What page is this? Page 12, down here at the bottom. So we're gonna go back up to the Symbols reference. So as we putter along in our formula, we get to we get to reference what we're trying to accomplish here. We're gonna paste the image. And so I don't forget later, I'm going to copy the paper by reference, and I'm going to insert a footnote right here. Keep your documentation tidy. Okay, so what is the title? What is the, well, we'll come back to title of formula. Okay, so it's our footnote. No, don't do that. That's terrible. Okay. Whoops. There we go. Normal font. Let's move on. Move along here. So let's do this the cool way. So we'll do uh, insert formula equation. So we're going to be T sub M. Oops. I have, it's been a little while since I've operated the Google formulas equations. So T sub M, arrow to the right. You know, I should really, no, I don't have the tools, but I, I should really have a uh, on-screen keyboard Thing so you can see what buttons I press. 
So G divided by, well, let's do this fancy. Let's do uh, A over B. G, right arrow, two pi times cosine. What the hell is that? Let's, let's find out here. That's one, that's one of the things we really needed to find here. Um, that little, oh, that little H, O and the H for the sub O. That's not a theta. Oh, it's so wonderful for an American paper from the 70s to use metric units. It's, it's awesome. See on the right-hand column, we have units. Make sure our overlays are correct. So it's not in those listings. Uh, did we have a, a bigger listing of units that we skipped by? No, that was that list. Well, um, it may be, maybe it's in that paragraph. Cosine of H, well, let's, uh, maybe it's in this. Ah, uh, wait, is it? No. That's just a theta. We're looking for that little symbol, the H and the O, sub O, or sub zero. You may have to deduce this from the context. Let's go look in the text up here, just in case. Mm, not finding it. Okay, so. Let's try and figure this out. We're talking about this slack. Ooh, the slack film or fabric of the sides of the balloon as it's partially inflated. Uh, it is slack in the side to side motions, but not in the vertical direction because it is supporting the load of the payload. So thus in such a portion of the balloon, aside from skin weight, the stress or tension T sub M per unit of horizontal circumference varies inversely as the circumference. So let's uh, let's define these variables here. Um, there like a, but I'm, I'm trying to write this formula down. Is there a simple? Is this an actual like math symbol? This uh, cosine this H in the O. Let's dig around in the symbols table. Not there. Maybe in the Mac OS table of math. Lots of fancy letters, but I didn't see any in circles. Letter-like symbols. Latin. Currency symbols. Woo! 
Cool stuff. <clears throat> dominoes. <laughs> Didn't know dominoes. No playing cards. Didn't know those were Unicode. Situation. I'm getting the feeling that this may not be a may not be one we can find easily here. There's some things in circles, but not letters to the point of having an alphabet nor H specifically. Maybe this is some kind of old kind of old nomenclature. Cosine of H is that height? That is the height of the sphere? Hey, I don't know where it was hiding this, but look at that. Look at that. Circled Latin, capital letter H. I got stuff all hidden in here. I wonder. That's not fair. Font variations. Wow. There's one that looks remarkably like it. Ariel. Hey, we're even playing Ariel. <laughs> um, let's do it. We in a place to be typing. Let's, uh, let's define our variables. So, insert. Is there a quick and easy sub super sub subscript apple comma? So we'll do the uh, o, the H with the O in it, the O with the H in it. Ready? We'll do apple comma. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's an apple at a zero. Yeah, that doesn't solve what it means, but, uh, but we're on track. We can now write it, at least. Go back into the formula and complete that. Whoa, the hell A little bigger than one would like, but... Uh, Nope. Whatever. So let's do the super sub thing. So there we go, and that equals and we get to the next bits and pieces. There we go. Equals B V. So let's uh, divide by B V to
There we go. P, and then we do super sub, subscript R sub M. Beautiful. It really helps to retype these for me um, because it then I can create a reference table of the values, the variable definitions using the same symbol that I've got the formula written in because a lot of these formulas are written strangely using weird symbols, different fonts, uh, but we can get it consistent here. So, copy T sub M, copy R sub M, copy G. V, I know V is fine, but just, just for the practice, B. What the hell, we'll, we'll get all the pretty italicized versions. Probably excessive, excessive and obsessive. All right, let's go dig in for definitions. See, I would not have, I would not have guessed that G was the total payload weight at the attachment point. Uh, nowadays, I guess that could be gross lift. Dimensions. I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume M is liter, M is meters, L is liters, and T. Come on, did you have to reduce these to the base units? Um, so it's ML over T, wait. ML over T squared. Oh, I hate these dimensions, these forms. Uh, total weight. What is the definition of a kilogram?
Oh, what? Did that really say leaders? Did that? Mm. I think they define these units that they're using here. Feel free to chime. Length. Length. Maybe it's length, mass. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're looking. It's looking like mass. Mass, length. For time squared. There it is. There it is. Wait. <laughs> ah. See, this is a good review for Dan from Basic Science. It's been way too long since I've done the maths, uh, i.e. just a couple years, not since college. I mean, kilograms times meters per second squared. Of course, that is weight, force, newtons. or yeah, per second squared, or just as they wrote in the paper, kilograms per meter second, to the negative two. We got it. G, weight. Next. Hmm. Well, I thought I got enough sleep, but I must not have. Let me do an just verify audio levels here. To know that touching that microphone really comes through loudly. All right, audio levels sound good. Pardon me. B is the specific, specific lift of gas. Yeah, that sounds like a hack unit to me, but whatever. It's an old paper. We're learning from it. Principles are sound. Volume, yeah, guess that one. P in the lower case. So we have the capital P, which is not what we want. Uh, oh, nope, that is the lower case P. P is pressure, sensible. P sub M, we think that is meridional tension. Oh, that's interesting. Subscript identifying its symbol with the equator of a balloon, i.e. meridional. T sub M, meridional tension per unit of material width. Meridional. Meridional width.
material with. Oh, I'm typing at the bottom. Sorry, focus. Take that uh, banner down. R sub M, what have we got for that? Radius of curvature of a meridional, of a meridional section of a balloon. Meridional so is a word, is so a word. Add it, add it. Meridi. <laughs> yeah, well, that wasn't meridional, Dan. Let me see if I can unadd that now. Remove, beautiful. It already knew meridional. Good on you, Google Docs. So now the mystery remains, what is H sub O? Well, let's see if sub O is listed here. Subscript identifying its symbol, with the reference level far below a balloon's ceiling pressure. Hmm. So what this, so let's look at the, the equation itself to get a clue here. So we have what it finally distills down to is pressure times the radius of the balloon section, which this is a core concept in ballooning in super pressure ballooning. The pressure times the radius equals the tension in the material that uh, we were all over that loon balloon design. G, we have the total load at the attach point. Two pi times, what is two pi? Two pi r is, two pi r is circumference times cosine of a number. Does that give us, wait a minute, what does that give us? Oh, I'm so bad at remembering geometry. Trig, actually. Um, let's go Googling. Everybody's Googling now. Pi. Mm, I don't think that's exactly what we're looking for. 2 pi times cosine.
Pupae Cosan Sign Circle cosine Now this H now the subscript O was the referring to the balloons. What was it? A reference level far below a balloon's ceiling pressure. I think that's height. Height. Per unit of her horizontal circumference. Stress tension per unit of horizontal circumference varies inversely as the circumference. Horizontal circumference. So we have an arc circle of length t here. Cosine is equal to x. So are they, they're, they're talking about, yeah, I think this might be what we're, what we're getting at.
the cosine of t why is t used as an arc length or and the angle Oh, the math gives a headache here. I think this calls for a snack and more tea. I want to solve this. That's the point. Refreshing the brains on figuring these old, well, these relevant formulas out. And let's give it a title before we go out to get T here. Something like that. Something like that. So what we're working towards this page seems to have some clues. All right, lovelies. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to still be with you, but I'm going to take a little break here for a snack and uh, some tea. Um, please feel free to comment and chat. Um, 
I will be happy to respond and discuss things. I'll be back. Just set an away message. We'll be back.
Thank <laughs> you.
And we're back. Hope you enjoyed the picture of me during my loon day. I've got uh, Earl Grey tea here today. did my circle stuff go? How is our processor faring? refer to the formula for a cylinder that I already have here in this oven. Formula. Oh, I'm writing the pressure formula right now. <clears throat> well, let's just run some things through here to try that. Good old Wolfram Alpha. Google, you did, uh, you copied and pasted very elegantly there. 
g equals. Let's do some sample variables. That's the weight. So we want newtons. We'll just say a thousand newtons. And <laughs> that does make sense. Uh, lift of gas over volume gives you the buoyancy force. Which would be basically the payload, I think. Come on, caffeine. <clears throat> I'm actually getting a little tired of the Mars music. Let's, let's break out the Kerbal. Really, really don't like the way DLC does playlists or lack thereof. Really. So what we need now, we know what pi is and we just need the h. So hmm. Does this need an angle? Yeah, you much need angles for sine and cos. So let's uh, <clears throat> is that one that in degrees or radians? Well, we'll just try it both ways. So, say 360 degrees.
there a solver in Wolfram Alpha? Interesting. Why are we getting secants involved in this game here? Approximate form. Okay. Good Lord.
Really? What are units of tension? Mass time, mass over time squared. Really? Really? So it's kilograms per second squared. And for what? These blasted units, newtons per meter. That makes sense. Newtons per meter. Not kilograms per second squared. The hell does that drive from a meter? Radian per second square, angular acceleration, that's not anything. Okay, now I know they're just fucking with us. Grays per second is meter squared times. Well, whatever. I think we've done enough today, head banging of the of the wall. So thank you all for joining me. And I'd like to thank, once again, our patrons. Please consider uh, donating on patreon.com. Um, it is something I really need help with uh, to keep doing this uh, and proceed with balloon science. So thank you to Mike Bowen, Sheila Bunch, Ben Lathan, Kenneth Howard, Sophie Searcy, M. Fong, Ashley Meyer, Robert Quaterbaum, and Steve Randall. I need to pull up uh, music citations now. Stand by. Thank you.
And of course, this paper has been Scientific Ballooning Handbook from 1975, edited by Elvin 